Hey everyone, welcome back to another video in my Prime XBT Leverage Trading Series. Hope you guys have enjoyed the series so far. If you haven't watched it yet, tons of video on risk management, position sizing, um, and things that can help you trade and stay in the game longer. So make sure you check out the whole entire playlist when you have time. Today, we're gonna talk about fund allocation, how to manage a leverage trading account, uh, spot trading accounts and things of that nature, how to allocate the funds basically and uh, at the least amount of risk for you. Now, of course, not financial advice. This is just stuff that I've learned and how I do things. So I thought I would share with you in case some of you are interested and want to know how I go about it. Before we get going, I want to give a quick shout out to Prime XBT. They've added a ton of altcoins lately. So make sure you give them a try. If you want to get a nice $7,000 deposit bonus, you can sign up in the link below. Enter the code after you make an account and you'll get a $7,000 up to $7,000 deposit bonus. If you're in the United States, unfortunately, you have to use a VPN now. Um, otherwise, you know, you're good if you're overseas. Let's get into this content for you. All right, you guys, let's get right into this video. Uh, I'm going to hit on some risk management stuff just generally real quick, and then we'll get into talking about, uh, you know, how to manage funds or, you know, low risk ways to manage funds. So um, basically, like less than 5% risk at all times. Okay. Like, less than are oh, you guys aren't gonna be able to see that let me get a brush less than five percent risk all right now a lot of people do like one to two percent that's great um that's i mean just in a general like overall sense like you really shouldn't be risking more than five percent of your account at any time all right now that might be a little bit gracious and if you don't have set strategies and you're losing five percent over and over it's not going to do you too well but um you know sometimes one to two percent is unrealistic so we're just going to say overall we want to you know never overexpose ourselves to more than five percent risk at any time okay um, so our risk can be managed through position sizing, stop losses, um, things like that, okay? And not only that, what some people don't understand is like, let's say that this is your baseline of your account value, we'll make it green. This is your baseline, okay? And let's just say that you have, you've entered some positions here and you like are just holding and you've entered like 10% of your account, right? 10% of your spot account right here and it starts to go up. And now these positions, let's just say overall, collectively, they're up 20% collectively, okay? Now, um, you have, from your baseline, you're up 20%. So technically, you can start building risk elsewhere, right? So like you had 10 to 15% of your portfolio in and now you're seeing growth there. So why not start adding some risk elsewhere as your portfolio is growing? And overall, your risk should be now lower because let's say on these initial positions, your stop losses are all at break even. So if all of those positions go back down and the whole market crashes, those positions are now break even and you have less than 5% risk on those new positions that you just opened right here okay so worst case if your account if the whole market's just completely nuke and you had spot exposure you're only down five percent at this point in time all right so that's kind of a way you can look at that when you start to get some positions in profit you can start to you know allocate risk elsewhere now if you're a beginner you join crypto and you go, oh, I need to make a lot of money fast. And you go, all right, I'm gonna start with $500 and you take that $500 and you're like, where should I put this money? Let me put it into leverage trading because if I put it in my leverage account, this $500 can actually be $500,000 or whatever with 100x leverage. And now I'm gonna make money 10 times as fast. And then five minutes later, you now have $12. Most times you're gonna lose all of that money and then you're gonna put in more and you're gonna lose that and you're just thinking about all of the money you lost and you're never gonna make money. It is a little difficult if you start trading in a bear market because shorting is going to work out nine times out of 10. And I actually basically in 2018 is when I really started hitting trading hard. Um, and it was bear markets. So like, I didn't really trade much. I just learned. I took some low risk positions here and there. Um, a lot of them didn't work out. I remember one month in 2018, maybe like August or September area where we had like a week or two of pumps. I caught some pumps. 
everything continued to nuke and I made a little bit of money during that time. And a lot of times it was just sitting on my hands and I did not trade leverage um, the whole 2018. It was just spot trading. So it was very difficult for me to make much money in 2018, um, but I did preserve my capital. And that was a great lesson for me to learn during the bear market, which a lot of people don't understand. Your main source of growth and your largest account, in my opinion, okay, this is how I conduct things, should be your spot account, okay? This is, and again, not financial advice, yada, yada, yada. I'm just showing you guys what I've learned and how I like to go about this. And if you learn something that you find helpful, great. Um, but again, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a Twitter degenerate, right? <laughs> so anyway, so spot account should be like your biggest account. And honestly, this is how I started. And this is how I grew. So start by growing my spot account. And you know, when you have a, you can start with a smaller account and then as you grow it bigger, you can grow it bigger. But the, the, the main thing is you really, you can't liquidate yourself on a spot account. Now you could go all in on a shit coin that goes down 95%, but you really shouldn't be doing that. Right. Because if I'm sticking with my less than 5% risk, I should have only 5% risk on my spot account at any time. So if I buy Bitcoin at $5,000 and it goes up to 10K, I'm have 2X that portfolio, that portion of my portfolio that's in there. Now I can start adding risk onto altcoins or adding risk elsewhere, right? The percentage moves on altcoins and Bitcoin and things like that are different. So like if I could put in like, let me change the color here. So we'll go black. So 50 percent of my let's say i do 25 percent of my account i'm oh, sorry i can't type apparently 25 percent in btc okay and that's all for now like let's say that was at 5k or whatever all right and i have my five percent risk on that or whatever and then it doubles and now it went to 10k all right well that's great now i have i'm up you know 25 percent of my account i don't what do I, what do I be up 25%? Yeah, my account would be up 25%. I have a lot of risk potential now that I can start moving into altcoins. I could keep this into Bitcoin. I could shave some of this. Like let's say I shave 15% or 12.5%. And now my account uh, level, so my account level started here, right? And I shave profit. So now my risk potential started here. Well, now if my stop loss is a break even and I took profit, my actual new baseline is here because I can't lose any more money. I mean, technically, you know, you could have some slippage or whatever, but basically I can't lose any more money than this because I started here at break even. I'm now up 12.5% in realized profit. So my account is now up 12.5%. No matter what, if this goes back to $5,000, if Bitcoin does that, right, then my account is still up 12.5%. I close that at break even, yada, 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 right? So that is how you can think of these kind of things. And over time, you'll slowly see this growth. And, and the key here is, <coughs> excuse me, the key here is not to see this kind of growth in your portfolio and this kind of price action, right? Because that is not sustainable. You really, really want to see it like a growth curve on a chart where it's just kind of steady growth and there's maybe some steady downtrends, okay? And your downtrend should be nice and slow and steady. And every once in a while, you're going to get some crazy moves like this, okay? And they're not going to happen often. They will not happen often like that, but every once in a while you get these crazy parabolic moves and then you just keep that slow growth because what happens to a lot of people is this and then this and then they're like, oh, I'm, I'm doing well again and then down to zero and then you can never regain from that. So Bitcoin, of course, and what I was, my main point here was the percentage of things. So if the price of Bitcoin is $20,000, let me put an apostrophe in here so it's easier to see, then a $1,000 move down... Okay, if it drops $1,000, that's only a 5% drop, right? So, I mean, that's a lot, but again, if let's just say my whole account was in Bitcoin and it goes down $1,000, my account's down 5%, I could close it. That's my max risk potential, you know. Again, typically, you would wanna see a little bit less risk than that. But what people don't realize is that Bitcoin should be kind of like the standard in your portfolio, right? The, as, as Bitcoin moves, the altcoin market moves, yada, yada, yada. The whole market moves with Bitcoin. With Bitcoin is your low risk in your portfolio, right? Because it's such higher value than all of your altcoins. So BTC is low risk. Can you guys read this? Look how pretty this is, you guys. So BTT, BTC is technically your low risk asset in your portfolio because then you get into all these altcoins that have a lot of volatility and their price is way less, right? So let's take Litecoin, for example. Litecoin, if Litecoin is at 
$50, okay, is at $50, then a $1 move or two, well, let's just say a $2.50 move is 5%. So if this drops 250, that's a 5% move now. So it has a lot smaller room and margin for error. So if you just go all in on altcoins, the volatility of your account is more likely to be like I had talked about earlier and not so much steady ups and downs, right? And you want that steady flows because it's much easier to grow and come back. It's much easier to grow a portfolio when you see steady drawdown and you can recover from it rather than when you just see this. Okay, because you're just thinking about how do I get back to this and it's going to take forever because there's that old chart where if you're down 50% on your account, you need 100% gain to get back to that. And 100% gains are tough. And you wouldn't technically need to go all in to get 100 for, to get a 50% gain. And and here's so if you take anything away from this video and we'll probably we'll make the rest of this pretty quick. Um I'm, I'm hitting on the main points, but if you take anything away from this video is don't start risk management down here. Okay, start your risk management when your portfolio is up here or here. Because what a lot of people do is they go, oh, I'm just, oh, I'm doing well. Ah, I lost all my money. Okay, now I'll have good risk management. And with good risk management, it takes you. Yep, this is, a, this is long and drawn out for a reason here. Okay, and then blah, 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 we'll just say, you get that parabolic move finally. Okay, so it takes you this long in time to reclaim this short of a time killing your account, right? So that's the reason why you need to have consistent risk management throughout so you can see your portfolio do some small downs and then hopefully some growth to the upside. And when you get to this point in time, you're already up and ahead rather than boom. And you're trying to claw back to where you could have been right with bad risk management. And not only that, if you have bad risk management, you're literally just wasting your time because most likely you're going to lose money. And like why sit at a computer all day and trade all day, every day, if you're just losing money every time, like you're just wasting your time. If you're doing that for years and wasting your time, then why do you keep doing it? Right? Okay. So what you should do is grow your spot account. Let's say that my spot account is up 50%. And I'm like, okay, I'm up 50%. I want to take on some more risk. Why not, right? Now, that's when you can... Oh, I tried to make it green. Anyway, that's when you can go say, okay, maybe I should make... Maybe I can take like 2% of my portfolio here. 2% of portfolio, okay? Okay. And so if I take 2% of my portfolio and put it over here into a leverage account, what does that mean? That means that there's 2% of my overall portfolio risk now here. So if this gets liquidated, I'm only losing 2% of my account and that's within my risk management parameters anyway. And if I take risk management over here, okay, then I'm only risking, you know, 5% of this account, then actually that's like 2% or 5% risk of 2% is less than 1% risk in my overall account, right? Or less than half a percent. I don't even know. It's very minimal. So now you've grown your spot account. And honestly, if you grow your spot account during the bull market and now you're kind of bored and you're like, well, I'm not making any money here. So let me throw some in here while still preserving this capital over in my spot account for the next bull run, right? You're preserving capital. You're not, and, and what most people do is they're like, I have a $10,000 account or whatever the value is. And they turn it into like 2000 or 1000 or 500. And then when the bull market comes around, they're like, oh man, my $500 account is now up 400%, which is only $2,000. Okay, so you did all this undoing in the bear market, and then now the bull market comes and you're so far behind. But whereas if you have really good risk management and you're playing it safe, and maybe you're not even that good of a trader, or you don't understand how to trade bear markets, but your account is at 8,500 from 10,000, and now you forex, you do a 400% growth on your account, and now you know it's above $20,000, all right? So that's why we preserve capital in bear markets. That's why we don't trade as much in bear markets because in bull markets, you just kind of let your money ride and you keep slowly adding on exposure to low risk areas or bottomed out charts, okay? Oh man, you guys, this, so back 
last year, maybe February or something close to the top, somebody came to me and they're like, oh, I just put half a million dollars into Uniswap. And they pull open this list and I kid you not, it was like 200 long of different altcoins on Uniswap. And I had probably only heard of about five of them. And bleep, 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 like just, I was, I was floored, you guys. I'm like, what are these? Oh, I don't know. I just found this on here and this on here. And I threw some here. And, and he's like, I wanted to diversify. And I'm like, that's great. But you're diversifying your whole portfolio into something that doesn't have stop losses and could go to zero at any moment. And 90% of these are very illiquid. And if you have an illiquid asset, you do not want your whole portfolio in an illiquid asset. You want it in Bitcoin or something to where if you need to exit, if you need to exit your full portfolio of Bitcoin in an instant and you have a $500,000 Bitcoin portfolio, you can get rid out of that with very minimal slippage. On some of these altcoins, you want to get out of a $500,000 position, you might lose $50,000 in five minutes just by trying to exit quickly or even more because there's so much slippage and there's not much volume in these order books. Okay, so you need to understand that. The right way to do it is to say, okay, my leverage account has doubled or you know what i'm going to take one percent and put it over here these are your meme coins okay your shiba or your uh I mean, shiba back in the day was nothing right nobody knew about it shiba kinu inu uh titcoin whatever these random coins on uniswap that you heard of you put that money here now some of them will do a thousand x and that's great and some of them will go to zero, but you don't want your whole portfolio exposed to altcoins that have the potential to go to zero like that in an instant with no liquidity. I know people want huge gains and that's the way to get huge gains, but very, very, very few people actually make huge gains on a large portfolio. And the people that are making huge gains um, on these, they're getting lucky if they're just throwing their money blindly, they're right place, right time. Uh, the other people are the ones that grew their accounts here Okay, they grew their spot account and the more they grow their spot account, the more money they have to play with in these other areas. So if you just start, let's say two years ago, okay, because it's a long-term game, you guys. Let's say two years ago, you start with a spot account that's, I don't know, let's just say your spot account two years ago was $20,000. Okay, now you're, sp so you're, so it's $20,000, so you put $2,000 or you put $1,000 in between the two. So you put 500 here, and 500 here, okay? Well, let's say in the bull market, your spot account actually 5X'd, right? You went from $20,000 to $100,000. So now you could put $2,000 here or whatever and $2,000 here and play around with it now. And now this $2,000 that you're playing around with on these high risk assets, you maybe have a chance to really grow it, okay? Like, and now when you're getting that 10X, it's showing a little bit more gains, okay? But you're doing it the safe way because you need to have money to make money. And if you don't have money, you're not gonna make any money. So the whole key here is to preserve your capital, okay? Move it around into low risk areas if you're doing large amounts, large percentages. And then you take these small percentage things and put them, you know, small percentages into high risk um, place. Um, and that's how it should be done. Like if you're going to go all in on an asset, you would want to, you would technically want it to be like Bitcoin, right? Because again, 5% drawdown on Bitcoin is a lot less scary than drawdown on an altcoin that could drop 10, 15, 20% in the same amount of time that Bitcoin drops 5%. Okay. So I know it's appealing to make a lot of money really fast, but what usually happens is you lose a lot of money really fast. So over time, you can grow your account and the more your account grows the safe way, then you have more money to play with elsewhere. And then you can start taking larger position sizes and those smaller percentages that you're moving around will actually become larger sums of money. And, you know, before you know it, your 15, 20, $100 gains that were, you know, good gains are now becoming $500 gains or $1,000 gains. And you're starting to really see the money pile up, but you're being safe. You're not taking on extra unnecessary risk and you're not risking just wiping yourself out in one go. And that is really the absolute key here. 
I really appreciate you watching the video. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for tons more educational content about crypto and trading. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.